Hello, this is Dr. Michael Shear with Learn Locator, a free resource on how to treatment plan, utilize, and maintain locator and locator RTX attachments for overdentures. In this demonstration video, I'm going to be describing my same day locator laboratory reline protocol that I use in my clinical practice. Now, this clinical protocol is aimed at clinicians that are interested in doing a same day or next day. Uh, reline protocol. So the idea here is, is, is that if I had a patient where I have a, an existing soft liner in place, healing abutments are on top of the implants, and the patient's been wearing this kind of loose denture during the healing or transition time period between when she had the implants placed and now is waiting for same-day procedures. Many times the surgeons that I work with do do some sort of alveoplasty procedure where they level out the ridge a little bit after I deliver my immediate denture and now I've got a lot of soft liner that needs converting into a hard surface so that way we finish the patient as a definitive treatment. What I do in my practice is, is I coordinate a same day or evening reline with my technician. So if I'm going to do a same day procedure, I'm going to see the patient first thing in the morning, then my laboratory technician is going to work on it during the day, and I'll bring the patient back right around 4 o'clock to do my denture con uh, attachment um, processing material conversion. If I'm doing an evening procedure, that I would see the patient do my PVS impression later in the day, that would give my technician the opportunity to work overnight at his or her leisure. What I like to typically do is to see my patient first thing in the morning. And when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and follow my step-by-step -step clinical protocol that's listed here. I like to go ahead and imagine that if this is my patient, again, coming back with some sort of soft liner in place. In this case, uh, this is using the Zest chair side uh, soft liner material. I've got two healing abutments that are in place. I've already gone ahead and I sized the tissue form of my locator abutments. And now you can see in another video here on the channel of how to properly do that. So I'm just going to briefly describe it again. But if you want more depth and detail, check out that other video. Step number one is we would go ahead and use my 048 or 050 hex driver and remove my healing abutments. And just confirming the sizes, I would use a periodontal probe, measure the soft tissue height all the way around the implants, and then I'm going to use some sort of irrigating syringe, either with sterile water or with a um, material such as this, Concepsis, which is just a, um, a specialty type of chlorhexidine irrigant. I like to use that prior to placing on any sort of implant abutments to keep things fresh. I've already sized my locator RTX abutment and it's already been put through a cold sterilizing solution. So now I'm going to go ahead and place directly onto my implant and place my second one. Once I have initially placed it, I use my hand driver to go ahead and tighten it down all the way on both sides. Now once finger tight, we're going to go ahead and recommend making a radiograph, either a periapical or panoramic radiograph, uh, to confirm full adaptation of the implant parts. After doing so, I'm going to take my torque indicating ratchet and torque down until I reach my manufacturer's recommended torque value. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start most of the, the conversion of the reline procedure. So what I like to do is I like to remove the existing denture liner, either the hard or the soft liner. To do that, I use just my chair side prep and polish kit. Or you can use just a hand instrument. A hand instrument could be something like the spatula, just to pop out any sort of the soft liner. As you can see, the chair side soft liner is in there pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just use my locator recess burr. Now that I've used my locator recess burr to remove most of the soft liner, I'm just going to take a hand instrument just to kind of clean it up a little bit more. Now at this point I've got it pretty well cleaned off. 
And I'm going to go ahead and take this and just place it lightly onto my patient's ridge. Just verifying that it feels like I'm not contacting anywhere. Most of the time when you have a lot of soft liner in here, you don't need to do too many adjustments after removing the soft liner. So after doing so, we're going to go ahead and place our blockout spacers and our housings onto the abutments. And I like to check the, the fit of the denture using my chair side light body PVS to check for any areas of contact. So I'm going to come back to my vials, and my vials, I've removed the abutment side and put those off to the side for now. And now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop out all of my accessories that come with all of my locator RTX abutments. Now do note that in the standard legacy locator line, you will not have all of these parts included with your abutment. They have to be ordered separately, which is the processing pack. I recommend placing on my blockout spacers and then placing on my housings. Now we're ready to go ahead and just take this with a little bit of hand pressure and I like to verify that my denture is not feeling like it's rocking back and forth. Now since this is a model that is meant to size and hold those abutments, there won't be too much adjustments, but invariably, almost 100% of the time, I have to use my chairside light body PVS to show any areas of contact. Without any adhesive, I just take my light body PVS and I inject it into the area of where the abutments and the housings are. I go ahead and I place that onto my edentulous ridge with light finger pressure. This takes approximately a minute or so, minute and a half for this to set, but I always want to go ahead and ensure that this denture is down all the way. For this particular procedure, you can have the patient bite down or bite down on some cotton rolls. We're going to let that set and come right back. Okay, now that my material is fully set, we're going to go ahead and carefully pull this off. Now you'll see here that sometimes I do end up picking up these parts. Now typically in the mouth there's a lot of saliva so I won't pick these things up in the mouth. But it's pretty easy to just to go ahead and pop these things out. And what I'll do is just, is just go ahead and gently pop out my housings. Just to demonstrate what that should look like when you remove it. Now you'll see here, this is a pretty good classic appearance of what this should look like. We have all of this yellow chairside material, the, the light body PBS, and it's showing a little bit of pink here and here and here, and those are the areas of uh, tissue contact. What helps me is I take a red-blue pencil and I use the blue end and just take my pencil and rub around the inside portions of that feeling for any areas of contact like I would right in here. Now, you'll see as I go ahead and just carefully tease this away. Now, I've carefully teased away my chairside light body PBS impression material, leaving behind any areas of that blue poking through of needing adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and take my undercut burr for my denture prep and polish kit and then just touch any areas within the recesses that need any. Alternatively, you can use your grind burr to do the same task. So now I've got my recesses properly sized. I'm going to go ahead and place back on my blockout spacers. And I'm also going to place back on my housings. Now, just as a safety check, I take my patient's denture, place it back onto the ridge, and I should verify that I've got no rocking. Now, since I'm also doing a reline procedure, I also want to verify that when the patient bites down, that there's even occlusion all the way across. The vertical dimension should also be matching approximately what the patient had before I started making any sort of adjustments here. I instruct the patient to make sure that they bite down lightly, and we practice that a couple of times. Now with these housings and blockout spacers in place, now our next step is to go ahead and size our recesses properly if needed, which we've already done, air dry and apply PV, PVS adhesive. 
One thing, as an aside, is as I put here on my step-by-step -step protocol, an optional step. If you need to change the denture borders, air dry the denture, place adhesive, and use chair side heavy body to inject onto the borders and border mold. So case in point, I have a well-designed denture with appropriate borders all the way around. If I need to modify the borders by shortening them or making them longer, I can always add some of the chair side heavy body PVS to the borders, and then border mold is normal. Now what I'm going to do is get my denture ready for a closed mouth reline impression. So I want to go ahead and take PVS adhesive, lightly coat all of the surface of where I'm going to make my impression. What I've done is I've air dried my denture, so make sure it's very dry. I'm going to take any commercially available PVS adhesive with a couple of these little brushes, almost like Benda brushes, and I'm going to apply the adhesive all over the denture bearing surface. I also want to go ahead and make sure that it applies all over the borders and the entire denture bearing surface. As I apply the adhesive, I'm ensuring that the adhesive is even and well coated all over the intaglio and borders of the denture. I don't want an excessive amount of adhesive pooling in any areas, but I do want adhesive everywhere. I'm going to take this and let this set for approximately five to seven minutes and after that time I'm ready to go ahead and make my reline impression. Now that my PVS adhesive is fully set up, we're ready to go ahead and move on to our next step. So we have now sized our recesses, air dried and applied adhesive, we're ready to go ahead and inject chair side medium body PVS onto the intaglio, seating onto the ridge and then have the patient bite down lightly into MICP centric. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our simulated patient and what I use in my practice is the chair side medium body. Now I don't recommend doing a reline with the light body or the heavy body. It's either too runny or it's too thick. The medium body is perfectly suited for this purpose. All I have is I have a spatula and then my chair side medium body PVS. What I instruct my assistant to do is, is just to take a light amount of this material and inject it on the intaglio surface. And you have to work relatively quick since this is a fast setting material. I'm going to make sure it's rolled everywhere all along my borders and all my tissue bearing surfaces evenly. Now I'm going to go ahead and seat onto my edentulous ridge, light pressure, and then I instruct the patient to bite down into centric. When the patient bites down into centric, it ensures that the denture is seated down all the way on all the soft tissues at the appropriate vertical dimension. At this point, I would start doing my border moldings, have the patient stick out their tongue, move it left, right, lick their upper lip, and then swallow lightly. I would massage the cheeks, the lips, and then have the patient repeatedly tap, 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 just so that way it verifies that the denture is seated down all the way. Now what I do is I repeat the border molding one more time, tongue out, move side to side, swallow lightly, and then I go ahead and have the patient lightly close back into centric and hold for approximately two to three minutes while the material is set. So we're going to go ahead and let this material fully set and I'll come back and check on it when it's done. After my material has fully polymerized, I can go ahead and just verify that that has occurred just by checking the tip of my chair side medium body PVS. Now that I know that it's fully polymerized, I can go ahead and tell the patient I'm going to very carefully remove this from the mouth. Now I do let them know that there is a chance that they could feel a little bit of pressure or potentially a little bit of discomfort while this is being removed from the mouth. Now since I'm working on a model here, it's going to be a little bit extra pressure just to remove this, although in the mouth this is much easier. And I always tell the patient that there is going to be a lot of pulling and tugging just because those clips have now fully formed around the PVS and locked in. So now inspecting my reline impression, this is about as good as I would get here on a dental model. You can see here that I've captured all of the soft tissue properly. I don't have any areas of show through. That's too excessive. One or two little tiny spots here or there is no big deal. And typically what will happen is, is I will pick up my housings on the inside of my patient's uh, denture reline. It's pretty easy to go ahead and just gently remove my spacers from my impression. And now we're ready to go ahead and get this 
off to the dental laboratory. What we're going to do here at this point is, is, is that we're now going to send to the laboratory for our hard reline. And I include an additional optional step in here, include laboratory parts. What I typically do in my practice is, is I just remove the little housings and send that to my laboratory. My laboratory will pour up a stone model inside of this impression and they'll use a little jig that sets the teeth in stone on one side and the soft tissue on the other side. And what happens there is, is when they pour without the metal housings in place, it'll make a, a stone model replica of that housing. When they process the acrylic to it, it's going to create a size of a hole that's perfectly sized for the actual housing, except that you need to enlarge it just a little bit. That will prepare for a direct pickup or attaching the housing to the patient's denture chair side. Alternatively, what you can also do is to send the patient's parts with the laboratory impression. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you. These are analogs that are used for the RTX implant system. The analog can also go into these housings just like so. And your laboratory can pour that up in the stone model. Then incorporating the housings into the reline. So that way when this comes back from the laboratory fully relined, I've actually got the locator housings already embedded in the acrylic. That way is a very popular way with clinicians because it's so simple I just pop it in the patient's mouth and then we're, we're done. However, me personally what I do like to do is, is to go ahead and have the, the laboratory process the denture just like a standard acrylic denture without the housings in it so that way I would pick it up in the mouth. However, this is what a, a clinician has the option of doing to send it to the laboratory just like this. What I do though is, is I go ahead in my own office is I remove the housings from my PVS impression. And now it goes off to the laboratory just like this. The laboratory will pour this up and now I can go ahead and bring the patient back later on to do my denture attachment processing procedures conventionally like shown on all the other YouTube videos. So finally, our last step is, is we're going to go ahead and after it comes back from the laboratory, I use PIP, PIP indicating paste, adjust the fit to the soft tissue, and then if I'm picking up directly in the mouth, which I typically advocate, I can use my chair side denture prep and polish kit and attachment processing material to process the housing to the denture. Now that being said, I do know a lot of clinicians and myself for a lot of cases where I'm doing more than say three or four implants, I do like to go ahead and have the laboratory use the analogs and then process the acrylic directly to the housing. I like to do it only with this reline step because it's just such a thin amount of acrylic that the laboratory is adding and the chance of polymerization shrinkage is very low. But nonetheless, uh, this has been a laboratory demonstration of what I do in my clinical practice with my protocol for same-day locator laboratory reline pr uh, procedures. This is Dr. Michael Shear with Learn Locator, a free resource on how to treatment plan, utilize, and maintain locator and locator RTX attachments for over dentures. Thanks for tuning in.